gentlemen, let's get into it. The three quarterbacks. I mean, is there even any point at this point to talking about the three quarterbacks at the top of our rankings? I mean, really, Sean, I'm just going to give it to you. Who, who are you high on this week at the quarterback position? Uh, I'm high on Josh Allen uh, for many reasons, but as price being one of them, he's 6,900 um, at DK this week. Uh, last he's coming off of a floor performance. He did just enough to beat Baltimore. Um, but you know, he only threw for 206 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions and only ran seven times for three yards. Uh, it, it could have been due to the wind plus that, you know, the Ravens offense wasn't doing much, uh, to force the bills to, to really, um, have to throw much. Um, so, you know, I figure this will be a ceiling type performance from Josh Allen um, and I will be all over him here but like you said the top three almost doesn't matter because we would just be talking about uh, who's ranked last (laughs) in that case so um, you know it's it's a tough slate in that regard but I I think you can't pass up Josh Allen right here yeah uh, I'm with you there on Allen he has the rushing ability that Rodgers and Brady don't uh, and Mahomes is uncertain with the toe and head injuries so uh, Allen really feels like the guy I would want in this spot Raybon who are you high on well, first, I have a, a question for Sean. Uh, you know, you said you like Josh Allen because of his price at 6900 If his price was 7 or 68 would you like him as much? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have him ranked number one, so <laughs> he'd have to be priced much, much higher for me to say that. Yeah, yeah so, uh, I mean, I can't really get away from Josh Allen. Uh, I, he's my number one quarterback, but – uh, since Matthew Friedman, I know you're going to talk about this guy in your hate section. Uh, I'll talk about him here. Uh, for DFS purposes, I like Tom Brady at 6,100 for the exact reason that he is the cheapest quarterback. Um, I, I think, you know, Patrick Mahomes being at 7,600 does create, you know, importance with these other three guys who are, you know, 800 apart, whereas Mahomes is 800, you know, higher than, than Allen. So um, Brady, 6,100 against the Packers who the the weaker pass defense in that game, maybe the weakest of the four remaining pass defenses in this, in this um, championship weekend. And the bucks are still going to throw the ball a lot, still one of the higher pass rates uh, in the league. So I don't, I'm not as worried about Tom Brady in the cold weather. Um, He's got a ton of receiving weapons. uh, So I like Tom Brady at 6,100. I just don't think there's a lot of differentiation between these four outside of the fact that, I think Josh Allen's rushing ability still puts him above the rest, but uh, Mahomes, I don't think he'll run as much, even if he's active because of number one, you're worried about, you know, getting hit. And number two, uh, he has a toe injury as well. So I do think you have to consider Brady, especially giving all his weapons, all the stacking options that, you know, come from that um, at, at 6,100. Yeah. I mean, Brady certainly does have the stacking options. I'm a little more hesitant about, uh, including Antonio Brown in there, because I think he did suffer something of an injury in the second half of last week. So uh, that's why we saw more Scotty Miller. So uh, I'll be curious to see what happens uh, with Antonio Brown in the practice reports this week. But um, yeah, I mean, nothing against Brady, because I don't actually think that there's that much of a difference, as you said, between uh, between Brady and between Rodgers in terms of how we would project them. But like my gut feels as if Tom Brady has a much lower floor and, and maybe I'm, I'm wrong there, but I feel with Rogers at Lambeau uh, we have a really strong sense of like the range of outcomes with him there and Brady in the cold at Lambeau. I don't know. I feel like there's significantly more downside with him. Of course he is cheaper. So uh, you know, there, there is some savings there, Sean, who are you down on this week? Uh, I'm down on uh, Mahomes. Ray Bonner, you touched on it. Um, I think with him, you know, we, we I, I'm lowering his rushing stats a bit. Um, you know, all the attentions on the concussion right now, that's that's going to determine if he's going to be able to play or not. But, um, you know, this toe injury could be concerning. I know Andy Reid has already said the toe should be okay, um, whatever that means. Um, you know, a guy like Philip Rivers can play through it just fine. But Mahomes, you know, he, he is a lot more mobile, not only to rush, but, you know, escape pressure and then you know extend the play to make a huge play so it it could be something that lowers the ceiling a bit um I'm also wondering you know maybe Mahomes ownership will be lower this week so he could be an option where you kind of pay up to be contrarian but um as of right now I'm I'm a bit lower on Mahomes mainly because of uh, my rushing projection for him is much lower which you know last playoffs I 
he he was averaging, you know, 30 to 40 yards a game on the ground. I thought, you know, going to the playoffs, I thought we were going to see that. But I think given the injuries, um, he's going to dial that back a bit. Yeah, ex- except for the Super Bowl. He didn't he didn't get to 30 or 40 yards in the Super Bowl well, in glorious fashion. That, yeah, yeah, because he kneeled down three times for negative 10 yards, right? Yeah, that was fantastic. <laughs> uh, Rayvon, I know that you also are low on Mahomes. Uh, I'm, I'm low on him to the point where I'm, you know, like projecting him for half because I, at this point, you know, not sure he's going to play. I would imagine he clears the concussion protocol the way that, you know, these things kind of happen uh, for a big game, but, you know, not certain that it happens. Rayvon, what are your thoughts on Mahomes? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm just for projection purposes because there's only four quarterbacks. And because I think, I mean, the market, the betting market is kind of setting the lines as if Mahomes is going to play. So I, I have him playing, you know, over 90% of the, of the snaps, kind of just the normal uh, injury, you know, probability with a little more mixed in, but I do think he's still the value wise, the guy in DFS that um, you'd want to have the least exposure to. The Chiefs, remember, they haven't been blowing teams out. They haven't won by more than a touchdown since week eight. Uh, and over that span, Patrick Mahomes' numbers have taken a little bit uh, of a dip as well. He's only had two of his patented 30-point you know, DraftKings games over that span. And uh, I think with the 7,600 price tag, with the you know possibility that he does get re-injured uh, or something like that, uh, I, I just think he is the, the worst value of the – of the four quarterbacks. And I just do want to touch on, you know, we mentioned earlier Aaron Rodgers, uh, I mean, excuse me, Tom Brady's floor being low at Lambeau. Uh, I would say the same for Aaron Rodgers, just because this Bucks defense was the one defense this year that really uh, outside of Carolina, which was a little bit kind of, uh, that was just one of those games, but uh, the Bucks defense really did have Aaron Rodgers numbers pressured him on 43% of dropbacks, held him to 16 of 35 passing for 160 yards, no touchdowns two interceptions so um i think both i think really all three quarterbacks aside from josh allen have such a low floor the reason being buffalo has passed on over 70 percent uh, when you include you know scrambles over 70 percent uh, have been called passes in the in these playoffs and josh allen's been running a little bit more so um that rushing floor combined with the the, the play calling tendencies for buffalo i think give allen a huge floor and rogers low floor because of the matchup Brady on the road in a, you know, cold, a tough stadium to play in. Uh, and then you have uh, Mahomes dealing with the injury. Sean, what are your thoughts on Rayvon said specifically about Aaron Rodgers in the matchup? Um, you know, that matchup was uh, in like week eight, week nine. So like, I mean, it was, it was a while ago. It was, it was over half a season ago. Uh, and we're not sure if number one cornerback Carlton Davis is going to play. He exited last week with a concussion. So he also has to get through the protocol uh, on the positive side. Uh, there's the potential that Vita Vea might come back for this game because uh, he's been designated to return from IR. So what are your thoughts on the matchup for Rogers? Yeah, I, I'm not too concerned just based on week six, you know, every team's going to have a bad game every season. That was, you know, the Packers worst game. Uh, I think they'll bounce back here. You know, Vita Vea, I was going to mention in the next segment, but his return, um, you know, is going to be huge for the run defense. Um, and, you know, Tampa Bay has been more of a pass funnel defense. So I'm not, I'm not concerned at all um, in terms of Rogers when it comes to this matchup. I mean, I mean, I'll just say that like, we could, we could throw out week six. I do, you know, coming into that game, I did think that this team had some matchup advantages, but let's just look at the game against new Orleans. I mean, new Orleans is still a good passing team and Tampa Bay held them to 20 of 35, uh, 190 yards, two touchdowns, three picks. Um, and that's including Jameis Winston's 56 yard Taysom Hill, like touchdown bomb to Trey Klon Smith. So, I mean, this defense played very well against New Orleans with Sean Payton scheming that up with a 56-yarder by the backup, 190 yards on 35 uh, attempts. That's still very good. Yeah, I would say they they weren't able to contain Jameis Winston. That's how I would phrase <laughs> that game. <laughs> uh, fair enough. All right, Sean, uh, give us the player prop for quarterbacks. By the way, everyone should check out the player prop tool at Fantasy Labs. And, of course, also the new – player prop tool we have at action labs uh the fantasy labs player prop tool specifically where the props with a bet quality of 10 have a 60 percent win rate over the past two years that is a smoking number and of course when player props are posted you can bet them at bet mgm sean give us the prop 
All right, since this is such a good QB slate, I mean, there there isn't much to haggle with here. I mean, all quarterbacks, you probably have projected 290 to 300 yards. I'm I'm proposing what will be the highest passing yard total this weekend. So all four quarterbacks. This Mahomes has to play. That's the caveat to this. Over under 352 and a half yards. Under. We saw that last week. Um, quarterbacks. I think there. What was the highest total? Was it the, the Chiefs? I'm not. I have combined. To yeah, that. I think uh, Mahomes and Henny combined for like 330. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I'm. I mean, we've seen this historically in the playoffs where scoring is down a bit, and you know, colder weather scoring down. You know, scoring cor- correlates yardage correlates with scoring. Uh, so 352. That's a high number, especially with Mahomes not 100. percent uh, I think there, there's one team that could do it. It's probably the Bills and Josh Allen. But, you know, I, and I know Friedman will talk about this later. Kansas City has been good at scheming the ball away from wide receivers. Buffalo specializes in throwing two wide receivers, and Josh Allen did struggle in that first matchup. So uh, just a hefty number. I'd go under. But I'd actually say, uh, like, if I was just betting on this, like, long shot bet, I would probably pick the the Bucks to, to clear it just because the Bucks. Um, you know, Tom Brady's not going to run. And if they get down to the Packers, I could see them just throwing the ball uh, a lot in the second half. Yeah, I will. I will take the under just in terms of the the median or probably not even median, but like the mean projections that I have here. Um, I'm still under the, uh, the like kind of 290, 300 marks that uh, Sean, you were talking about earlier. So uh, just even thinking about, you know, like uh, standard deviation, if a guy has a blow up game, he could still have a really good game and not hit that mark of like, what was it like 350? What was it? 352, 352 and a half. Yeah. Like I I could see, I could see a high in the three thirties or three forties. Yeah. Raybon mentioned last week, I think the highest was uh, three thirty for a team. This is, you know, this is an individual player. So if a guy gets hurt and the, but, you know, if you go back uh, the week before, Brady threw for 391, Big Ben threw for 504. So this is this is one of those things. It's not so much the media and you're going to have, you know, an outlier every week uh, with with only four quarterbacks. It obviously lowers the ceiling a bit. But, you know, this is a pretty amazing four QB slate. So um, I, I ran my sim on this. 352 is my line. I'm sticking with it. It's I mean, it's intriguing. Quarterbacks matter more than defenses. But it is also a good defensive slate too. Yeah, yeah. So it'll it'll be you know it'll be fun. I think at a minimum to see how these quarterbacks match up yeah. against the defenses. 